May I request all of you to be seated and kindly switch off your mobile phones. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with our first panel discussion. The topic for the first panel discussion today is Capital Markets Directions and Dimensions. I would like to draw your attention to the screens where the key issues to be discussed in this panel are displayed. The expansion of capital markets all over the world is widening the horizon of opportunities. The developing debt markets can satiate the credit craving manufacturing industry. Investment from foreign players are internationalizing the Indian capital markets. Hence, defining a well-structured regulatory framework for FIIs becomes imperative. We are privileged to have with us Dr. C.K.G. Nair. Dr. C.K.G. Nair is presently advisor capital markets in the Department of Economic Affairs, the Ministry of Finance. His primary responsibilities include implementation of the recommendations of the Financial Sector Legislative Reforms Commission, FSLRC, policy formulation, and administration of commodity derivatives markets. He has three decades of progressive experience in economic policy formulation and economic administration in the Government of India. Dr. Nair has been dealing with financial sector policy and administration for about 15 years in various capacities such as Secretary FSLRC, Director Capital Markets and Director Commodity Futures Markets. He has been a member of several committees, task forces and working groups on financial sector issues. He has interacted extensively with financial sector regulators policy makers and intermediaries in various jurisdictions. A PhD in financial market regulation, he writes and speaks periodically on market regulation, corporate governance, investor protection and related issues. We would like to felicitate Dr. Nair with the green certificate sponsored by Satries. We welcome you, sir. We are honored to have with us Mr. Vidhu Shekhar. Mr. Shekhar is the country head of CFA Institute India. He has been instrumental in the establishment of India office and is responsible for advancing CFA Institute's mission in India and supporting CFA charter holders in the country. He is a seasoned financial and investment professional with over 25 years of industry experience in India and abroad. Prior to joining the CFA Institute, he was the President, New Products and Business Excellence at the National Stock Exchange of India, overseeing new product initiatives in debt and equity markets for the exchange. He has also worked for various committees, including the Dr. Patil Committee on Corporate Bonds and Securitization and the Raghuram Rajan Committee on Financial Sector Reforms. Prior to that, he served as Senior Vice President at IDBI Capital Markets and Managing Director at E-Trade Systems India Limited. Mr. Shekhar completed his postgraduate diploma in management from the Indian Institute of Management Ahmedabad in 1987. He is a CFA charter holder and has served as Vice President of Indian Association of Investment Professionals, the CFA Institute Member Society in India. We would like to greet Mr. Shekhar with a green certificate sponsored by Satries. We welcome you, sir. We are also delighted to have with us Mr. Dhirendra Kumar. Mr. Kumar is the founder and CEO of Value Research, India's leading independent provider of mutual fund information and research. He is India's foremost expert on mutual funds. Since the inception of company in 1990, he has been dedicated to the task of guiding Indian investors. Over the last decade and a half, he has gained a unique perspective by closely observing the birth and growth of the modern Indian fund industry. He is the editor of Value Research's popular website on mutual funds and its two monthly magazines, namely Mutual Fund Insight and Wealth Insight. He is also a popular columnist and commentator in the print and electronic media. Mr. Kumar is a Bachelor of Business Studies from the University of Delhi. We honor Mr. Kumar with the green certificate sponsored by Satries. We welcome you, sir. You. Now, I request Dr. C.K. Jinayar to kindly begin the proceedings of this session. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Earlier, too, I have uh, come and uh, spent some time with the 
students of the Department of Financial Studies, and uh, it's always a pleasure to come back and speak on some aspects of your work and something which uh, would be beneficial to the uh, team of uh, aspiring young leaders, as I heard in the inaugural session when some of the speakers were uh, telling the uh, or exhorting uh, what should be uh, the qualities of a leader as they step out of into the world, uh, into the larger world. Speaking of financial sector reforms, or uh, specific, I would, say, I would start with the assertion that we can't speak of capital market regulation alone. It has to be a holistic approach in terms of the whole financial sector. So my theme would be to uh, cover the requirements of uh, how do you regulate the uh, financial sector as a whole rather than one segment, though the most important segment uh, in a dynamic uh, financial sector. Uh, there are various views. There have been various views on uh, how to structure regulation of the financial sector. And in fact, there were even uh, people who doubted whether uh, substantive regulation of the financial sector is actually required or not. Why to regulate or whether to regulate. But the global financial crisis had uh, effectively set those doubts uh, in uh, clear uh, focus. And in fact, I would also say that it's because of the short memory of our or ourselves that uh, we doubt whether uh, regulation of financial market is needed because the crisis is not a, the global financial crisis was not the first one which we faced. We had uh, many major and some of them quite catastrophic crises in the past. So because they get into the textbook and uh, only when we actually face the crisis, only the leaving generation actually faces the music and then we start looking towards the regulators and the regulation and see whether the regulators have failed. But I also, let me also put it across that probably in a business school group, regulation should be the last idea which should be told to them, even now. I mean, because they are thinking in terms of how to market their innovative ideas, how to come out with creative solutions to reaching the customers and how to create value. In their, uh, in their areas of operation and, and, and also choice. So regulation and in fact being a policy maker or a regulator would come as somebody who is, uh, I mean, who can uh, put some spikes in their uh, dreaming rather than uh, which would help address some of the concerns which they are uh, dealing with uh, at any particular point of time. Having said that, those who are clearly uh, focusing on the global financial architecture and what is happening to the global finance, what is the degree of volatility we are going through, and what is the disruptive technology which some speakers talked in the morning again, uh, which we are facing, <coughs> and how fast the product cycles are changing and uh, uh, moving, and how the human element ha is being uh, pushed back into the back room uh, by what is called high frequency trading through formulas and algorithms and uh, uh, the operation of new entities like dark pools. I mean, how fast things are changing. In fact, my colleagues, uh, Dhirendra and Vidhu will speak. They are the practitioners or they were, some of them are uh, close observers of the, uh, of the practices and some of them were uh, practitioners, though may not be right now. So uh, they will be in a position to speak more on this, uh, this thing. But from a policy perspective, what we have been trying to address these issues is how to, as I told you, whether to regulate or why to regulate is a question which is already answered by the market itself. And uh, how to regulate and how far we can regulate and how effectively we can regulate and what are the essential ingredients of that regulation. I will just touch upon some of these points and then come to the practical side which uh, my co-panelists will be speaking on. 
and uh, will be ready to take questions uh, if that is part of the uh, process which the organizers are uh, planning uh, towards the end of it. So uh, the institutional process of regulation. Regulation is about what? Regulation is also about managing risks. So you put it in terms of the market language or the uh, language of the management students. How do you manage the risk? But what are the risks which a regulator will be looking at? It is the risk to, in terms of the enterprises themselves, or in economics we call firms, or the entities which provide financial services or financial products. So what are the risks they are facing? How do you minimize that? What are the risks to the consumers? Virendra Kumar is a, uh, an expert in consumer protection. In fact, I keep reading and listening to his uh, articles and speeches. And how do you protect the consumers from the growing risk, which again, the risks, risks are growing to the consumers, even financial literacy is a shifting uh, milestone in the sense that it's not just that if you are 100 percent, if you are a 100 percent literate country, uh, still and you are an advanced country, still the financial literacy ratios are going down. Why the dynamics of the financial market uh, leads to that sort of a situation through the disruptive technology and the fast-paced changes which is happening to uh, the financial sector in terms of products and services and organizational structures, fast changing, in terms of the mechanisms of controls, in terms of mechanisms of governance, uh, these sort of things. So what are the risks to the consumers? And what are the risks to the system? So the systemic risk, uh, or in some of the people talk in terms of financial stability, this is a new concern. Uh, though it was an old concern during the depression years, but again got relegated. But it has become, it has come to the fore with uh, much more force after the global financial crisis. And when you talk about risk to the system, uh, it is not confined to your domestic boundaries your domestic economies, because uh, the financial sector is interrelated through technology, trade, and financial flows. And they happen in uh, break, uh, I mean, even I can't describe the speed with which these changes happen in, the, in terms of financial flows and uh, uh, changes in the technology uh, supporting those uh, flows. So the risk to the system. And uh, so these are the three types of risk we need to address from the irrespective of the type of jurisdiction you are, uh, fall, uh, you are in, irrespective of the practices you follow, whether you are a parliamentary system, you are a presidential system, uh, you are even, in a sense, a semi-authoritarian system, but if you have got an open financial market, then you need to address these issues. So how do we address that? This is the biggest issues which we are facing in terms of uh, regulation. But then the question of also whether actually we are in a position to address all these issues effectively or responsively, if I put it in terms of responsive regulation, which is also an important point. It's not that you, you feel that some of these elements which I have talked, the risk to the system, the risk to the consumers, and risk to the enterprises are very high. So you put very high artificial barriers to their operation. No. Then, then you are timing the financial sector. Then the role of the financial sector is actually not that of a catalyst which will help in your economic growth. You, are, you have high growth aspirations. In the case of India, you, you uh, aspire to become a 15 trillion dollar economy in the next 15 to 20 years. I mean, right now you are a 2 trillion dollar economy. So if you need to have that sort of growth ambition, then you need to have a enabling uh, financial sector to support that. Because without finance, nothing moves. But only thing is that we had shifted the, uh, the sequencing from uh, re the re real sector to financial sector, and financial sector as a supporting uh, mechanism uh, to the other, other way around, from financial sector to real sector. That is probably where we put the horse uh, before the cart. But irrespective of that thing, uh, the financial sector has to play that substantive role in helping the economy grow faster. That's what the capital markets actually in helping mobilizing the resources, channelizing the savings into productive investments, all those fundamental reasons for the 
uh, the existence of capital markets and the existence of the need for a vibrant and active capital market, which, uh, which is known to everybody in this uh, hall. So the question is whether we have the capacity, I mean, regulatory capacity to address that. One of the reasons, in fact, why some of the jurisdictions played a secondary role in terms of regulation was this capacity question itself. Many of them thought that probably the market has more capabilities to understand and to factor in risk and the products which they were bringing in and the services they were bringing in uh, were already uh, tested for this sort of thing. Though it, unlike the physical market or physical products, the testing would be done in a different uh, dimension or mechanics. But many people thought given the high degree of intellectual capacity of the market and the players in the market, these sort of issues are partially addressed and the rest of the address could be uh, the rest of the issues could be managed through either self-regulation or an off-site regulation of a, of a very soft uh, touch uh, manner. But even the market, those who believed in the market itself have understood that that much soft touch is insufficient to address the three types of risks which I have uh, just narrated. And so the question is whether we have the capacity. In fact, that question is itself is continues to be a question because one of the problems uh, of uh, developing the capacity is the, the speed of dynamism of the market itself. Even if you catch up, if the regulation and the regulators catch up with the system up to a point, the, by that time the market would have traveled miles ahead. So it's always a catch up role. But even with that catch up role, how, do, how can you address? One mechanism of addressing this was through what was what is commonly called as principle-based regulation. Like you upfront mention or upfront chart the laws which would uh, broadly specify what are the areas where you should not be doing or how you should be doing certain activities and what care should be taken in addressing or in uh, coming out with your activities when particularly when the public is involved or where retail investors are involved. And uh, these sort of issues, uh, but when the global financial crisis came, uh, a broad principle-based uh, approach to regulation also was found to be insufficient to address that because that lacks enough guidance. I mean, or the guidance is all again uh, shifting its position over time. So the question came how uh, deeper you can go beyond the broad principles whether you can have a, a little bit uh, deeper rule-based approach, uh, though may not be in the primary law of the land, but through the regulations which the regulators themselves will make. Then in addition to that thing, regulatory capacity, uh, another question which comes is that the traditional regulatory capacity, is it that alone sufficient? Or we need other type of capacities in the financial system? Like if, a, for instance, if a systemically important financial institution, SIFI, is failing, microprudential regulations which are being used to minimize the risk of failure of financial fame. Suppose that, doesn't, uh, that did not help. A major company like the Lehman or somebody is failing. How do you address that system? How do you address systemic risk? So whether you need more tools or more specific agencies, why can't the regulator themselves address those issues? This sort, I mean, another question which has come up. One of the, the I, I don't have answers to all these questions. I'm raising these questions basically to uh, create ideas for uh, thought and uh, then collectively work together. But whatever ideas are uh, in the public domain, uh, which came up is that you need specific, special capacity to address systemic risk issues. And it should be distinct from the regulators. And the reason is that a regulator uh, rarely likes a regulated entity to fail because it will go in, into, the, uh, into history as, a as an inefficiency of the regulator that it has happened. So regulators would try to either camouflage uh, problems which are occurring in the regulated entities uh, or they try to address it through artificial mechanisms of uh, forced mergers or that type of uh, uh, 
solutions, which itself may not be a solution, which may manifest in a larger uh, problem at a later stage. So it is to be given to a person or an entity which will look at it as a systemic risk issue, like a resolution corporation, or the in the US, the uh, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, uh, which performs that role. So some sort of a systemic risk regulation capacity. Then whether the regulators can address front-end capacity of consumer protection, which again coming to one of the major issues, or the regulators will only bring in consumer protection regulation and the consumer protection grievance type thing should be addressed through a different uh, entity. So some of these questions, due to shortage of time, uh, let me also put on record that recent on the, in, the, in the phase of, uh, on the issue of consumer protection and what sort of mis-selling and other issues happen in the consumer protection area in, in India. There is a book, uh, there is a report of the finance ministry on its website which is hosted in the recent, uh, last week actually. So as far as the regulatory architecture is concerned, these questions which we have, uh, which I have just narrated, some of them in, though in very brief, we address in terms of uh, uh, as a system as a whole, how do we address the financial sector as a whole rather than on a sectoral basis in terms of how we address the risk in the financial system, the risk to the